And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a book. This is Games of Art from Sid Saxon. It comes with four erasable markers that actually fit into slots here on the book. And inside the book, it comes with different games. Now this is from Sid Saxon. This is a reprint because Sid Saxon has been dead for over a, a, probably a decade now. And he's a great designer known for Acquire. And these are games that you can like play anywhere on the go. You can play them in the backseat of a car on an airplane. That's something people look for. And this is games based on great artists. So let's take a look at this. So here's the book, Games of Art, and there's a forward by Sid Saxon, and then there's an explanation of each of the different um, games, which is named after a different artist and kind of based on their art. Um, so uh, Miro and Mondrian and Arp and Delaunay and Klee and Springer. Now each of these is on an erasable board, and so I'm going to show you a couple of the games. We'll start with my favorite game here, Miro. The first, Red Goes. Red's going to color in a segment here. I'm going to play a three-player game, and after red, the next person, blue, will color in two segments. So there's one, two, and then the third player, green, will color in three segments. One, two, and three. Now what players are doing in this game is uh, after each, after the first three segments have gone together, then a player can color in one, two, or three. Now you say, well, why wouldn't you color in three? You, sometimes it's not best to color in three. You're trying to finish things in the middle here. So after red, let's say blue decides he's going to do three. So blue goes one, two, three. And then green is after that. And green says, hmm, one, two. And green stops. Now it's red's turn again. And so red goes one, two, three. And after red, blue's going to go one, two, and three, and then green is gonna go one, two. Now green finish these two. Now this one here has two green segments on it, so it's worth two points to green. And this one here has one green segment, so it's worth one. And then green does a third one, which finishes another segment, giving green another point. Now after green is red again, so red goes one, getting two points for this one. And red stops there. Blue goes one, two, three, because blue's not very smart. And then green goes one, two, three. And now they're going to be circling around. And eventually you can see that eventually here, let's say red does one, two, three. And then blue does one, two, three. And now green's going to do well here. One, two, green finishes this one for two. Green finishes that one for that. Three, green finishes that one for one. Green finishes that one for one. So as time goes by, as they circle and loop within each other, they're going to be finishing them. You'll keep score, and at the end of the game, whoever has the most points is the winner. Now I'm going to show you Delaunay, which is a game that I actually am not as big of a fan of. In this game, players are going to be using one section of the board at a time. Uh, so let's say they use this one here that has the big dark line around it. So yellow is going to color in a section and then green colors in a section that's next to the one yellow did, then red colors in one, and then blue colors in one. Now yellow goes again, but yellow can't go next to the spot he's already gone. So yellow goes here, and then red might go here, green decides he'll go here, and blue goes here. Then yellow, now yellow can't go here, 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 or here, but yellow can go here, so he does. And then red decides that he'll go down here. Green sees this corner spot as a pretty good spot. And then blue can't go here, 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 but blue, blue can't go there because that's not touching one already. But blue can fit in there. Now it's yellow's turn again. Yellow can't go here, 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 or here. The only spot yellow can fit in is there. Red decides that he'll color in this spot here. And then blue, or I'm sorry, green is next. Green says, hey, this is a perfect spot for me. Blue says, I can go up here. Yellow now can't go. And because yellow can't go, at the bottom, where you keep track, yellow skips a turn and loses a point. So then it goes to red. Red can't go either. So red, and in fact, neither can blue, and neither can green, so this round is over. But each time that you have to pass, 
you will lose a point. So you're trying to color in the circles in such a way that allows you to put the maximum number of yours out there. Okay, I showed you my favorite game and I showed you my least favorite game. Um, and the other games all fall somewhere in between. The one I showed you that I didn't like is probably the only one I don't like. The rest are fine. And uh, the first one with the segments, I don't know why I like that one so much. I get a kick out of it. Seems like you should be doing three segments every time, but after a while you're like, oh, man, I just set this person up to do really well. And it also, these games look cool when you color them. Now this game has a few problems. One is that these markers will always run out. You know, you're best off as soon as you can getting rid of these and getting four really good um, erasable markers, uh, Sharpie brand probably or whatever brand, and utilizing them. But still, the, the games themselves have a lot of replayability. I mean, and you're getting several games in one here. Now the games aren't fantastic games. But there's a couple things. One, as I mentioned already, this is a great travel thing. And all the games that I found in here work seemingly just as well with two players as they do with four. The games are easy to erase. You can use a cloth or you can, you know, paper towel, whatever, or your hand if you're really feeling weird. Um, but they all have this artistic background. And I'm not a big art guy, uh, but I, I do recognize that artists have contributed a lot. And each of these, I think it's kind of cool that the game itself is focused on that person's style of art. So this is a pretty solid little thing. I mean, this is something you may not have heard about. You may not consider this to be a game. I don't see that this will be played in gaming sessions very often, but when you're sitting next to somebody or you have, you know, at a restaurant, this is kind of a cool thing to bring out and play. And you can even close it and finish the game later, as long as you are careful not to rub it too much. So a pretty solid little idea. The, again, I think this is one that most people haven't heard of, but the, the thought behind it is, is, a, is a nifty one. It's a games in a book, and there's some pretty solid little abstract style games in here. Dice Tower Judgment, approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Yeah. Yeah.